If you've been searching for a Fujifilm film simulation recipe for video that you can use without the need for extra color grading, look no further. All credit for this film simulation recipe goes out to my friend Harris Ahmed, a filmmaker and photographer based out of London. He gave me this recipe over DMs back in around like 2020 and I've been using it on every Fujifilm camera ever since. It works for travel, everyday documentation, content creation, and I'm even using it right now on this video for straight out of camera footage with no added color grading. But before I walk you through all the settings for this film simulation recipe, I wanted to take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, Squarespace. I've actually been using Squarespace for over 10 years. Their templates and easy to use interface make it incredibly simple to create and maintain a professional looking website. My Squarespace website was an essential part of how I built my photography business. It allows me to showcase my portfolio, share recent work on my blog, and receive inquiries from potential clients through my contact form. If you're one of those photographers relying on your Instagram profile as the sole place to share your work and build your photography business, I would really consider making a website on Squarespace. You can visit squarespace.com slash Reggie Ballesteros to start a free trial and get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I'm going to walk you through the settings of this recipe using the Fujifilm X-T5 as an example, which uses the X-Trans 5 sensor, but it's exactly the same on the older cameras as well. The X-Trans 4 sensors, maybe even the X-Trans 3 sensors, and because it works on the X-T5, that means it's also going to work on the new X-106. So to start off, you're going to want to make sure you're in the video mode of your particular camera. Once you're in the video mode, you're going to press menu OK, and then we're going to go to the image quality settings. This is where we're going to set the look for the film simulation recipe. So for this look, we start off with classic chrome. And while a lot of filmmakers may use Eterna, I found that the Eterna just felt a little bit too flat for me. My personal taste needed a little bit more contrast, so I have classic chrome instead. I feel like Eterna is a little bit more on the, the green side, whereas classic chrome is really with the cool and the warm tones combined. For the white balance, it's gonna be based on the particular scenario that we have. So when I'm shooting around and documenting out and about, I'm gonna use the auto white balance without any tweaks to it. And if I'm shooting somewhere like in my studio like this, I actually set it to a custom white balance that I calibrate using a gray card. Kind of like a gray card like this. And basically you're gonna put it in front of your camera and then you're gonna press the shutter and that's gonna change the white balance for that particular lighting scenario. So every time I'm shooting in my studio, I just use a gray card to calibrate it, um, and I set that to a specific preset. For the dynamic range, I set this normally to 100, but if you feel like you wanna get more tones in the shadows and the highlights for your particular image for the video, you can set this to DR400, but what that's gonna do is require a minimum ISO. So in this case, for the X-T5, it's 500. For other cameras, sometimes it's 640. So I'm gonna set this back to DR100 which allows us to bring the ISO all the way to the base ISO of 125. So if you shoot a lot of bright scenarios all the time and you don't have an ND filter, it might be better to go in DR100 to let you go down to the lower ISO. For the tone curve, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually flatten out the tone curve as much as possible to get more dynamic range out of the footage. So for highlights, I'm at negative two. And for shadows, I'm at negative two as well. If you want to have more contrast, you can always bump this up in the shadows. Or if you want to have more highlight contrast, you can always bump that up. But because it's for video, I want to have a little bit more balanced look. And for images that have a lot of contrast, I'm going to save that more for my stills work instead. For the color, I set this to negative four. Again, we're going for more of a flat look that isn't as flat as Eterna because Eterna at negative four and negative two highlights, negative two shadows is very, very flat. Whereas on classic Chrome, it's still usable straight out of camera. The goal for this is not to have the most malleable or the most flat image for video, but instead to have something in between flat and in between a very graded look. For sharpness, I set this to zero. If you watch other filmmakers on YouTube, they always tell you to put the sharpness for your camera all the way to negative or turn it off. But because I'm going 
for a look that is usable straight out of camera, I bake in the sharpness at least at zero. I don't go to the plus side. This allows me to actually have footage that looks like it's in focus without having to have an extra step in whatever editing software that I'm using to add sharpness to the footage. For high ISO noise reduction, I keep this at zero. I feel like the noise of Fujifilm kind of grain is very natural, so I don't really have to do adjustments on this. Once you have this all saved up, if you're using an XT series, you can save this to your custom setting here, which I have this to the documentary and vlog setting. And if you're using an XS or XH camera, you can save it to your custom modes, the C1, C2, C3, etc. And with that, my name is Rodri Balaceros. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, subscribe for more. And if you want to check out my favorite film simulation recipes for photography, be sure to watch this video over here.